identity. Johnson, Jose Johnson. Okay. So I got me Mr. Jose Johnson in Mahenzo Gracie School here, and I'm gonna snap him down at an angle, guys. When you snap guys down, and you fall up. Okay. From here, look. You can either attack guillotines like the ten finger we just did. So your options for front headlock are go that guillotine route. I teach nine advanced guillotines. Down here's got a little more technical, like six or seven. Boom. You got your whole guillotine series. Especially if you got long, lanky arms, high elbow, power assist. I mean, that's stuff you can quick kill with either of those. Especially MMA fighters, quick kill submissions. End of the round submission attempts, last 30 seconds. Keep that stuff in mind. So, we already did that kind of stuff. Now, I see this out here. I put a Gene LaBelle, one of my instructors. Gene LaBelle, three finger grips, what I like. If you just want to give a grip, that's cool. And I'm going to bump this elbow across. Now, I'm going to kill Jose because he's getting used to me. And I'm going to draw my shoulder on his neck and I'm going to attempt to shoulder stroke him. Now, if I can't, I can't. It's okay. I'm cooking the guy. Okay? This is a good starting off position in the front headlock to cook the guy. And, you know, I'm old school NHP if it's probably dazing me in the head all day. And that's awesome. And if it's not, well, okay. Okay. So, I bump this elbow across. I'm trying to get it as cross as I can. And I put the shoulder down heavy on the back of his neck, and kind of here. I'm, I'm making a lot of pressure here. I'm going to tripod up, and I'm going to pull with my lats. If you have long arms, there are different ways of making it more like a technical katakatami style choke, or like an arm triangle choke. That's inverted all craziness. Uh, but me, I, I can pull with power. Here, pull him across, pull my head in the well, and I tap him with the salt choke. So I pull my head, I dive my head in the well, but what's important is putting my weight here, okay? I'm, I tripod up, don't stay on your knees. You might go to your knees for a second, guys, it happens, but don't, that's lazy grappling. Try to have active toes on the balls of your feet. Boom, I sprawled them out, I bump this across, I put my head in the wheel, and I'm, I do this just by lat pull. Matt Hughes kind of built the same way that I used to train with, kind of the same way. Some people's arms, it's hard. The Schultz choke takes experience and feel to get. It's not one of those chokes where it's like something you can easily learn. So if you don't get it right away, that's okay because this is a killer, cooking, good position. You see guys try to spin drill to the back right away. On the lower level in MMA, lower level grappling, that might work. The higher level you get up, he knows right away to put his arm out and he might even turn that into a double leg and you end up on your back. Like, guys know, boom, and especially the lighter weight classes, fill and stuff, he's, he, guys will spin right away. I always want to be using gravity on my side and be cooking a guy with position. For, I'm in a winning position. Can he submit me? No. Do I have control? Am I over him? I'm over his head, I'm over his hips. I'm driving down at an uh, angle. Boom. Okay? That's always a good thing. There's no reason I gotta go right away. I can always try to spin to his back and take his back after. Cook him there. Even if you're not great at the choke, cook him there. So I'm pulling with my lat. Bump across. Here, here. Say I'm here, I'm gonna lighten up a little bit on Jose. So that I'm still across. I'm trying to put my head in the wheel. Yeah, and he's facing his elbow out. It's getting hard, but I'm trying to um, chop here with this wrist, back here. And if I can't get him, I drive in, he's gonna drive back into me, I put my knee in the well, and I choke him out here with the uh, catcher arm through guillotine. I hate it when they just act like this is a regular guillotine in the UFC. Rogan, you need to call it arm through guillotine. I call the catcher arm through guillotine. I got taught it by Rosemary Polaris and Bustamante. Bustamante is my lineage uh, at the end of my Jiu Jitsu type training. I like this much better than this, okay? It's different than a regular arm and guillotine. The reason, I, especially for MMA, is because I can bail. So, it's more safe to go to your back. Here, Pedro Munoz, the guy I train with, has killed a lot of guys with this. Grip-wise, whatever you kind of prefer. Figure out grips for yourself, guys. I can be in a regular, like I like to do my regular guillotine here, or you can even keep Instead of this relationship, you can keep the gable and keep this chopped in if you're strong. If you know how to pull with your lats. Okay, back extension. But the reason it's good is because if I can't get him, he 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. We're still scrambling, baby. And then I'm back up. I'm not ending up on bottom. Let me eat someone bigger. I'm killing Jose, but I want you to see this. Well, yeah, please, don't mind. So, I snap him to the ground. Decide if I'm going to go guillotine route or not. If I got a really good chin strap, I might be going to the neck and the neck crank we just did. If you have long arms, you might also Anaconda and Peruvian go in this front headlock series. We won't cover those today, but I have a video on my YouTube channel. They kind of changed a lot of things you saw in MMA way more often. Okay, I filmed it like 2014. So we're here, and especially if you have long arms, you might shoot to the Schultz control position. Here, chop this arm across as deep as I can, and tripod up. And I'm pulling them out. Let's see if I can get them. There I got So, you saw it took five -ish seconds and three, four. I didn't know if I'm going to get them. Keep it on for at least seven, eight seconds. Okay? It's like arm triangles. Because, like, I'm not getting it. You don't know every time the guy was about to tap. It's like a late switch. Don't turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. And always reposition. Just keep constant pressure. Then, eight, nine, ten seconds. It didn't work. And he was driving in, he's trying to like do some kind of takedown. He gives me that energy of pushing into him. He comes back. Then shoot to the guillotine, catch our arm through guillotine. So we're pulling with the lat, we're tripod up, I'm putting my weight with my shoulder. I'm making sure, always 45 degree type pressure, right? Okay. Here, one, two, three, and I, let's say it's eight seconds. He's not tapping, I'm trying to turn that corner. Now I can fill the space and tap him here. And he taps faster because I've already been cooking his neck. The pressure never really let up. Does that make sense? Okay, and uh, Jose, so uh, this one, like, in MMA, I do think at a high level, like, maybe in lower level, you can get away with jumping guillotines and letting the guy take you down. On a higher level, I ain't much a fan, but from here, if he starts, Defending one way or the other, pulling his elbow up. I can always spread him up. We'll get back to my feet just to disengage. Yeah. Pedro yeah. Emilio has a lot of other guys. Been really successful with this key team. When you watch it, we're watching MMA, the grappling, recognize the arm through. It's a different beast than a typical arm in key team or uh, just head key team. Okay? Any big questions? You guys kind of got it? Okay, so you can keep this grip, or you can always, after you bump that arm across, you might transition to this, or you might get it on the takedown. Also for the night, even standing, who knows has got it. I could be here, and now you're getting, like, he's turning, you're back of the head warning and stuff, or it's the end of the round. I can sometimes just jump this in, try and get the knee in the hole, and I can slide in and go for the finish from the like, side turtle or even standing. Does that make sense? So think three-dimensionally with this too. All right, ready? One, two, three. Please.